This is Kojo Raps on TV, live in Quarantine Club. I'm here with um, our first female boxer from the traveling community, Miss Ellie Hopkins. How are you doing, Ellie? It's Ellis, but I'm Ellis, okay. <laughs> Hey, correct I'm me off the jump, no problem. <laughs> I'm good. Good, good, good. I mean, obviously, everybody's in the same situation. Um, uh, this is lockdown. It's, it's tough for everybody. How are you and your family coping? You all well? Yeah, we're all good. A bit bored, killing each other. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're all good. The, the police are occupied at the moment, so I guess everyone's got a bit of free reign to do what they want. Um, but yeah, like I said, thanks for joining 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 us this afternoon. Um, really, um, it's it's not just a pleasure to have you on the show. It's obviously an interview. I'm really looking forward to kind of getting to know more about yourself. Um, so I mean, it's the it's the million dollar million pound question. Um, and you've got the title of being the first female boxer from the traveler community. Um, I mean, how how did that come about? I mean, how did you get into the sport of boxing? Um, I used to dance. We now had a dance school. Mm -hmm. um, and I got into a fight one day. I was only about seven, eight, maybe. Wow. And I got into a fight and she told me to go boxing with my dad if I wanted to fight. And I never left the gym, really, since then. Yeah. Was it was it easy to persuade him to let you join the jit club to the gym? No, he took me straight away. The day the day after I got kicked out of dancing, I went straight to the gym and I've never left since. Oh, nice, nice. Um, and um, what was that first day like? Um, I've I've always like when I was little, I was always a bit of a tomboy, so I always preferred being with my dad and going out and doing boy things. I suppose so it was just normal, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, a lot of people talk about their first time, you know, the smell of the gym and getting punched for the first time and maybe being a bit hesitant. For you, I guess you loved all of that. Yeah, it was just normal. Loved all of it. Yeah, yeah. No, the that, first time I went to the gym, I was put in for sparring with a boy. Wow. And, um, I think I beat him up, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, how did, what did you feel when you knew, was that the first boy that you had a fight with? Yeah, um, I've always sparred boys. I don't really get much female sparring, so mm -hmm. just one of them things. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm going to say I, I, I definitely like your modesty. You know that you're about to make your de debut on the 29th of March. Um, but I just want to talk a little bit about your amateur career. Um, just tell us how, like, who, what club you trained with, um, a bit about, you know, the trophies you've won. I know you fought overseas as well. Just can you give us a bit of detail around that? Well, I started at Bronson Golden Gloves Amateur Boxing Club. Um, mm -hmm. I've boxed there for about two years. And after, I think I turned amateur when I was 15, nearly 16. Um, mm -hmm. I did two years there. And then one day my dad says, why don't I open my own gym? I've been taking you to the gym every day for years now. I might as well go and open my own gym. So he opened his own gym. Um, the first year while he was open, I was still going back to my old club. A bit of loyalty, didn't really want to leave him. Um, I think I won my first national title in 2017 after only a year of amateurs. Wow. Um, got That's onto it. the England pathway, England pathway straight away. Um, got a silver medal at the Tri Nations. Um, should have been gold, oh, nice. really, but you know these things happen in boxing. Yeah. Um, Even on on all sides, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's <laughs> bad decisions everywhere. Yeah. Um, I won loads of different box cups. Went all over the world: America, Portugal, Ireland, Sweden, um, everywhere. No, no, really, that's that's good. And um, I mean, how did you find it fighting overseas, um, coming up against other uh, fighters? Is there? I mean, I know most notably you fought um, Daniel Dubois' sister, Caroline. Um, but I mean, can you tell us about any of the other names you fought and how you found fighting overseas? Um, I've been in with some of probably some of the best in the world. Obviously, Caroline Dubois. She's European world and um, junior Olympic champion. So. I lost out on a close fight. Could have went either way, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinion, but there you go. Um, been in with loads of other world medalists. 
beat yeah. a lot of world medalists, European medalists. So I've I've never really wanted to go to GB. Well, I was on England. I didn't really want to go GB and Olympics route. I always wanted to go pro. So yeah, and I mean, can I ask why? Why, why you ne were not interested in that GB route and just becoming a pro? What was the attraction? I don't know. It's just never really bothered me. I've always wanted to go pro and be world champion. Yeah, nice. So, I mean, um, as I said, you've got modest, but you, you're setting your ambitions high. Um, I mean, just go, go stepping back a bit for our viewers. Um, what, what weight class are you? Um, in the pros, I think it'll be super featherweight. Mm -hmm. or featherweight between the two um obviously there's not many girls out there so you can't be too fussy and you can jump a few weight classes mm -hmm. um but i think when we start getting titles it'll be super featherweight yeah nice and um you were due to fight out in uh in, in a card in leicester i believe is that is that correct yeah in my hometown would have been sold a lot of tickets yeah um would have been massive really but things happen yeah and and i mean obviously the, the show will continue um but just tell tell me how it felt um being able to sell tickets you know if fight potentially fight in your hometown get friends and family watching you from from a local perspective how, how did that feel going into it? um the tickets was a nightmare because i was just <laughs> i had to keep getting more to be honest mm -hmm. um but a bit i i went on meal prep for six weeks trained Three, two, three times a day for six weeks, and then got cancelled. It was a bit, I don't know, it was a bit gutting, really. But yeah. would have, would have loved to fight. I'd have been fighting about two miles from the house, and it would have been great, really. Yeah, couldn't have got, couldn't have got a better place for a debut. I mean, hundred percent. Um, but as we say, the the show will go on. Um, and you you signed a professional contract with MTK. Um, obviously a great stable uh, fighters uh, fighters under MTK. Just tell me how that potential that relationship came about. Um, and and why you chose MTK. Um, I signed with Asgatar first. Um, and yeah, then he, he says this ain't good enough. You need to go to the top. So. He did what he did and he got me signed with MTK. I just left it all down to him and he got me he got me the deal. Yeah, and we've got to say a big shout out to Asge. He's been supporting the platform, um, uh, not yeah. just the show. Um, obviously, he's recommended yourself and uh, helped, helped facilitate this interview. So, um, I mean, you look at MTK um, and obviously they've um, another, another fighter from the travel community, big name, obviously, Mr. Tyson Fury. Um, is he an inspiration to you at all? Yeah, definitely. Where where he come from and where he's come back from, it's it's amazing. Like two years ago, he was in whatever place he was at, and now mm -hmm. he's back on top. So yeah. yeah, big inspiration. Yeah, yeah, and um, I mean, obviously, we saw he had the the huge clash earlier this year, um, and and he won the WBC belt against Deontay Wilder. Um, can I just get your thoughts on that fight? What was your prediction going into it? I think he made Wilder look stupid. Um, yeah. It was just his game plan was a lot better, mm -hmm. and Wilder looked like a novice in there. Mm. He was gone from the second round, and he was no good to Tyson Fury that night. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that's a fair assessment. Um, and obviously leading into it, Tyson Fury spoke about his game plan. You know, walking forward and and sort of uh, basically knocking Wilder out. Um, was that something you thought? It was was believable. Did you believe him from the minute he said that? I I didn't think he was going to do that. So obviously, every one of his other fights, he's always in back foot and likes to yeah. box. But I think that's the best I've seen. I've watched him fight, and I think it worked for him. Yeah. I think he'll do a he'll do a lot better against different opponents like that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And obviously, the the, the third fight is being spoken about. Um. Is that something you'll be interested in seeing? Um. Fury just taking on Wilder. For the third time? Not really. I think it'll be a bit pointless, really. I don't think it'll happen either. Yeah, okay. What what makes you say that? Just don't think Wilder will want to fight him again. Yeah. 
I mean, he definitely had two two tough fights, and uh, the last one, as you said, I mean, he was stopped. So yeah, it, it will give him food for thought. Um, but I mean, mo mo moving on from from Tyson Fury, um, I just want to talk about a, a, another fighter in the travel community. I don't know if you're aware of him, uh, Dennis McCann. Yeah, I was trained. I was on England with him for a couple of years, training with him at training camps and whatnot. Yeah. Um, the monthly camps and the residential camps. Yeah, I was training with him. Yeah, good, good fire. What would, what's your thoughts on him? Yeah, he's really good. He's always been good. Um, I remember watching him on the England camps, thinking, "Oh, I hope they don't put me in with him," because <laughs> <laughs> we were similar weights. So they used to mix the boys and the girls because there were obviously weren't as many girls. Yeah. Um, but I think I'd, I think he would definitely go all the way. Yeah, and um, I mean, you spoke you spoke there about um, you know, sparring not being well. You're saying there's not a lot of female fighters to spar from. Um, so how do you get around it? I mean, do you, you know? Do you have people local to you? Do you have to travel um, not up and down the country, but to different clubs to get the the right workouts that is needed? Yeah, you have to travel to get sparring. Um, we go to Birmingham regulars. A few girls there. Um, went to Liverpool to spar Natasha Jonas. Yeah. Um, no. You, you have to travel to get a spa or else you don't get it. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I mean, typically, I mean, when we talk about sparring, um, do you ever spar any young amateur male boxers at all? Is that is that quite common for you? Am amateur what? Um, male boxers, men. Yeah, I spar the boys all the time in the club. Obviously, my gym's an amateur club, more mm -hmm. than pro, really. So I'm always in there sparring with the boys and... Getting their punched in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but on all, all serious note, and I mean, how does that how does that work? You know, obviously, the guys is do, do you do you go for the similar size, or you know, would you spar the bigger guys as well? How how does it how do you pick your sparring partners on the male side? Um, you just have to get similar weights or lower weights. Obviously, the higher weights are going to be too strong for me. So yeah. it depends yeah. on whether they're like. How old they are as well. If it's like a senior, then mm. you probably go for the lower weight. Or if it's yeah. like a junior, you can probably mix it up with the same weights. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Get... Depends on the experience as well, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, um, and in terms of your fighting style, um, how would you describe your fight, fighting style? And what can we expect yeah. to see? I think I'm a counter puncher, like to box. Mm -hmm. um, Southpaw, orthodox? Orthodox. Um, yeah, I just like to box. If so, if I don't have to get into a scrap, I'm not going to. Yeah, okay. So slick, slick, slick yeah. boxer. <laughs> um, and in terms of, you know, we're going to ask, I'm going to ask that question. In terms of your strengths, um, would your chin be one of your strengths? I've never been put down, so in 40 fights. Could say that. Yeah, I like, <laughs> I, I, never I, down I, either. There you go. I, I really like the modesty. Um, and you know, from a from a role model perspective, um, on the female side, do you, who who are your role models in boxing? In fact, scrap that female or male. Who are your role models in boxing? And which styles um, do you like? Obviously, Tyson Fury and Billy Joe Saunders. Mm -hmm. Um, Kate Taylor. Like yep. our style, very good. Um, <laughs> quite like Canelo. Yeah. Um, Loma. Yeah. Like it really. Yeah. Okay. No. No. It's good to, to hear. Um. And um. Obviously. We look at Katie Taylor. Um, she had a, a, a great amateur career, but she she turned pro and she's also so kind of hit the ground running. Um, is that something you would would you would like to emulate? Um, and would you take the tough challenges as quickly as possible? I mean, I'm only 19, so I've got time on my side. Whereas when the people turn over late, they've got to get the big fights sooner. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I want the big fights down the line, and They'll come, but we got we're in no rush. Yeah, 
Yeah, no. Um, I mean, de definitely. I've, and I have to say, we never ask a woman her age. So um, I, I didn't know, I didn't know you, you were so young. So yeah, you, you've got plenty of time. Um, and we really look forward to kind of seeing seeing more of you. Um, and in terms of, um, you know, we spot, I did ask you about MTK. Um, just tell us your thoughts on, on them as a company and, and, and as a promotion. I think they're fastly becoming the number one promoters. Um, they're getting the big fights for everyone. They're taking and making the big fights, whereas some of the other promoters are a bit not taking on, but they're making the big fights happen. So I, yeah. think, they're, I think they're great. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And um, uh, I guess the question I was going to ask, something you could give some advice to our viewers, um, in terms of exercise tips, everybody's at home thinking of new ways to, get, to try and keep fit. Can you give our viewers some uh, exercise tips that they can do in the house? In the house, um, on YouTube, in the garden. just go do some home workouts off YouTube. <laughs> I'm not very good at coaching. <laughs> no, fair, fair, fair enough. Um, you, you're good at fighting. Um, so, um, listen, Ellis, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Um, just wanted to say, do you want to shout out your social media details before we go? Um, yeah, you can get me on Instagram and Twitter. It's Ellis Hopkins XX. And, and just want to say, I don't know if you can read that um, comment on the screen. As guys just said, you're the contact to, for buying puppies. You, <laughs> is that right? Uh, yeah, I'm a breeder. I breed Frenchies and um, Bulldogs and Bullies. So Nice. So if, if you want to buy a pup, then it's Bard and Bullies. Bard and Bullies. I'll tell you what, message me that Instagram page as well, um, or, or wherever you, you sell them from, and we'll make sure we put that link um, in the description for this video when it goes online. Um, but like I just said, I just, before we let you go, I just want to say wish you all the best for 2020. Um, fights will start again. Look forward to seeing you making your debut um, and look forward to seeing a, a prosperous boxing career from yourself. Yeah, thank you. No, thank you very much for your time. So as again, enjoy the rest of your day um, and really do appreciate your support. Take yeah. care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.